Hello and welcome to the Circuit Python Weekly for July 29th, 2019. I'm Scott and I work for Adafruit on Circuit Python. Circuit Python is a small form of Python running on microcontrollers, which are tiny, inexpensive computers uh, that are in lots of things, and you can put them in lots of things to make th uh, all sorts of projects. Uh, this is our weekly meeting that happens on Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on our disc on the Adafruit Discord server, which you can join at the URL adafru.it slash discord. That will drop you in. Uh, everybody's welcome to join the meeting, so uh, feel free to hop into the voice chat during that time and listen in live. Um, this meeting is recorded, so everyone uh, on Discord be aware of that. Uh, we record the Discord window when we re record the voice channel as well, so uh, be aware of that. The recordings go up on podcast services, uh, so you can just subscribe and listen to it whenever you want. Uh, it also goes up on the Adafruit YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the links go in our uh, Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which you can join at adafruitdaily.com. Uh, this meeting is run in five parts. Uh, we start with a community news section, which is... Um, the highlights of what's happened around CircuitPython at the start. We'll follow that up with the state of CircuitPython on the libraries, which is a statistical view of the health of the project, um, metrics-oriented sort of things. Uh, after that, we have a section called Hug Reports, which is um, a chance for everyone to say thank you to other folks for the work that they've been doing and uh, highlight the cool things that are happening in our community. Uh, that is done as a round robin, so I will start and then we'll go alphabetically through the voice channel list. Um, if you let us know that you're lurking, uh, we will skip over you. Uh, if you're unable to make the meeting, feel free to drop uh, notes in the notes doc and I'll read those off. And uh, if you want to participate but do not have a microphone or choose not to speak, uh, you can let us know that you're text only and I will read it off for those folks who are just listening to this audio version. Um, so that's what a round robin is. Uh, the next section after hug reports is uh, status updates, which is also done as a round robin. And it's a couple minutes to talk about what you've been working on and what you plan on working on in the coming week or so. Uh, it's a great way to keep in sync with what other folks are working on and give tips and tricks uh, to folks on what they're doing. And then lastly, we have uh, the last section is in the weeds, which is a... <laughs> uh, in the Weeds is a chance for us to have longer discussions about uh, anything that's come up. Uh, we've talked about community stuff. We've talked about technical stuff. Um, if you have uh, topics you'd like to discuss in a longer form, uh, drop them in the notes doc, which uh, I think I can share out again. Um, the notes doc is made available uh, with the recording as well and has time codes. So if you don't want to listen to the whole hour-ish long meeting, uh, feel free to take a look at the notes stock and skip around. Um, and yeah, so uh, if you have in the weeds topics, either drop them in the notes stock or in the circuit Python, te Python text channel, and we'll snag them there as well. And with that, I will take a time code and hand it over to Phil for community news. All right. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Okay. First up, uh, if you were at Pi Ohio, Katni had a keynote, and we've been keeping track of the tweets and more look like it was amazing keynote. If there is a video, we'll post it up on our site and more. But I just put some links and some of the kudos that came in about Katni's keynote. Sounds like it was really good. Next up, um, we have STM32 support. So that means I get to write the headline. STM support snakes its way to CircuitPython. So there's a pull request that just got merged. So you'll start to see CircuitPython on a few of the STM32 boards. Um, as soon as it gets a little further ahead, we'll have it on circuitpython.org slash downloads. And we'll have some stuff for folks to play with. Um, CircuitPython day is coming up. It is next week. We'll have things going on all throughout um, August in some form. But for sure, uh, unless... There's no airplanes uh, flying here. Scott's going to be on the show on uh, Wednesday. And then uh, during the week, we have some special surprises for some this year only Circuit Python Day things. So that'll be 
cool to watch. Next up, um, in the news, uh, Magpie Magazine, which is a free download and so is Hackspace. Uh, the first one is Control Servos with CircuitPython and Raspberry Pi. That's from Maker Melissa, so check it out. It's a really good article. And then Hackspace Magazine has CircuitPython storage in addition to a bunch of other articles, but this one has the benchmarking that they did that we also post about it uh posted about um we're not really into the the speed races but since uh since we did great um it's a lot more fun mm -hmm. uh we put a <laughs> we put a video up um stemma and stemma qt there's a lot of different standards out there and one of the things we wanted to do is just make it easy for microcontrollers for for linux to use lots of different sensors so there's grove there's gravity there's quick and there's stem and stem qt so what we did was make something that's the most compatible with all these so we have a big guide with a table um i helped lamar with this over the weekend because we really wanted to have like what works with what what doesn't and then a video explaining a little bit of it and that kicks off our series that we're doing which is uh stem of sunday so you'll probably see a new stem aboard every sunday for ever mm -hmm. <laughs> just like just like we did with um if y'all remember a couple summers ago, I think we kicked it off in the summer. We ended in summer. We we did a feather wing a week for like a year, and that really that really got a lot of wings out there. Um, Keith, who does a lot of interesting stuff, uh, he has a snack board, and it's going to be added to the Circuit Python download section soon. So take a look at um, his blog post as well as um, how he was able to add it to. Circuit Python for a lot of folks out there that are um, working on hardware. It's really easy. Um, he needed a VID PID and uh, he requested it and we got one back to him. So check it out. Um, yeah, as Jepler said, uh, SNCC is a cool language on its own right. It's a really neat way to squeeze a Python like thing into like the, the, the even the old Arduino processors, so AVRs. So it's kind of cool. Um, Nicholas uh, is working on a very cool Piper card project. We're calling it Piper card. Um, I've talked about this a few times, but he actually put up some stuff on GitHub and he's asking for feedback. So go to github.com slash ntol slash Piper card, take a look at the tweet. And the goal is to have a desktop application, Moo, that works on Linux, Mac, PC, and able to do things like write a story, view it, and have these HyperCard-like experiences. And the JSON format just lives on your device. And uh, we'll do some guides and more, but uh, check it out. This is, uh, if you remember how fun HyperCard is, if you're a little older, um, or if you've been on archive.org playing with HyperCard, or just uh, have heard about it, or not at all, check it out. And then um, last up, uh, we're, we have in the coming soon, section of the newsletter that's coming out tomorrow um i sent an email to the team i'm like hey we, we have this gigantic pi portal that we're doing we have a little tiny one we called it pint we have the regular size one and now we have a bigger one so if anyone has any name ideas you can put in the circuit python chat as well but check out the newsletter there's now like 100 different names um i'm kind of leaning towards a. Uh, Pygantic. <laughs> I think that was from mm -hmm. Maker Melissa. Just because it's funny, because it's a Pygantic Pi portal. And that is the community news. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Always happy to hear everything that's going on. All right. Let's do the state of CircuitPython on the libraries. Uh, as I said earlier, this is a chance for us to have a kind of metrics based view of the health of the project make sure that we're uh not skewing our our view of how things are going um and so these numbers should reflect kind of our priorities with the project so um overall uh we had 40 pull requests merged uh and again this data was from the adabot run yesterday um so 40 pull requests merged uh we had 18 different authors which is, they're both pretty impressive numbers, so I uh, think things are going well. Uh, folks that I don't recognize in this 18 authors list are J Tripp, uh, MS Costi, Zoste, NC Guck, uh, NC Guk, uh, Woeful Derelict, uh, Anthony D. Girolamo. Uh, so thank you to all those new folks that I don't recognize in the author list. Uh, we had six different reviewers for those uh, 40 pull requests. So uh, thank you to all six reviewers there. And as always, um, if you want to start contributing to CircuitPython, doing code reviews is a great way to start. 
um, test the code that people are changing and make sure that it still works and uh, let us know, drop a comment, and uh, we'd love to have your help with that. Um, Issues-wise, we had 10 closed issues by 8 people and 12 opened by 7 people, which means we're net up 2 issues, uh, but that's not too bad. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. Um, overall, I'd say that uh, we're close to having 410 out the door um, and working really hard on 5.0, which will include some uh, API changes, uh, breaking changes, both within the BLE world and with the audio world. So uh, keep an eye out on that um, and potentially best IO as well. But we'll, uh, we have ongoing discussions about that. And uh, yeah, so expect to see 4.1 soon. I hadn't actually thought about it, but maybe we should do that by CircuitPython day next week, probably would be good because I think a lot of people are up, are using the release candidate anyway and really enjoying it. So I should probably do that this week, actually. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out on that. Uh, state of the core. Um, we had six pull requests merged uh, from six different authors, um, which is pretty neat. Uh, and we had two reviewers, Dan and myself. So again, uh, always happy to have folks do reviews. Uh, we had 13 open pull requests. The full list is in the notes doc. I will not read them off here. And we had two uh, issues wise, we had two closed issues by one person and four open by three people. So we're the reason we're up two uh, at, for a total of 184 open issues. So hopefully we'll get that down. Uh, we have six active milestones. Uh, the main ones are uh, 410 has one open issue, which I think has been fixed, but it's not masked. Master, so the issue hasn't been marked as fixed. Um, we have six open 5.x issues and uh, one issue that doesn't include a milestone. We also have some 4.x and 4.x.x issues, uh, 38 total that we should actually sort out uh, into 5x. I wonder if we should just make uh, the features and bug fixes ones uh, kind of near term stuff versus the long term bucket, but uh, we could think that over. Uh, downloads wise, we have two. Uh, we have a stable release 402, and we have an unstable release 410 RC1. Uh, 402 has 4,226 downloads, while the unstable release has 231. So if you haven't tried it, I recommend it. Uh, it's quite stable and it's a lot faster. So I'd encourage people to test that. That's another great way to get contributing. Um, Okay, libraries wise, uh, we have had 34 pull, pull requests merged from 13 different authors, so really expanding and growing, which is great. Uh, we had six reviewers, which uh, again, we'd love to have equal numbers of authors and reviewers, so always welcome there. Please reach out to us if you want to start reviewing, we'd love your help. Uh, we have 32 open pull requests, they're listed in the doc, I will not read them off. Uh, we had eight closed issues by seven people and eight opened by four people. So libraries-wise, they are equivalent. Um, 121 open issues with a link to circuitpython.org slash library slash contributing for details on that. Um, we had a number of new libraries in the last uh, seven days. We had a uh, nunchuck uh, display version of SSD 1306. We had CircuitPython requests, SSD 1325, SSD 1322, and the SSD 1327. Those are all OLED displays. That was my doing. Um, and then updated libraries, we had the SI 5351, the INA 260 display text, cursor control, ST7789, PyBadger, PyOA, ILI9341, Seesaw, and PyPortal were all updated in the last week as well. And that is the state of CircuitPython and its libraries. Let's go on to Hug Reports. Uh, Hug Reports is a chance for us to say thank you to everybody for their uh, awesome work that's happened in the last week or since we've had a chance to say otherwise. Uh, I will start and then go around in the circle as a round robin. Again, if you uh, are unable to miss a meeting, feel free to drop uh, stuff in the notes and I will read it off. Um, if you're a text only, you don't want to speak, let us know and we will. I will read it off for you. And also, if you're lurking, we'll just skip right over you. So uh, 
if you want to make sure we've got it, check the notes doc and we'll, and we'll let you know. Um, so for me, let me take a time code. Uh, first off, thanks to Katni for her PyOhio keynote. I'm super excited to see it. I wasn't able to find it online yet, but we'll keep an eye out. Uh, as Phil mentioned earlier, uh, sounds like it went really well, so I'm excited to see it. Uh, thanks to Kate Temkin from Great Scott Gadgets. I've uh, been bugging her about the Great Fet neighbor called Rhododendron, which is a uh, USB high-speed debugger, basically. Uh, so you set it in, in the middle of your USB high-speed connection, and it should theoretically get that into your computer, and you can debug everything that's going on the USB bus. Uh, it's super early days. I just got my Oshpark order last week along with all the parts and I'm hoping to assemble it this week. I'm just super excited and Kate's been super helpful uh, getting me all the stuff I need to do that. Um, thanks to C47D, Carlos, and Summersoft for Travis check to ensure new boards are always built. Uh, that's one of the common bugs that people have when they're adding new boards is they don't add it to the Travis YAML. So this check will make sure of that. Uh, thank you to TAC for the tiny USB fixes and update. Uh, Master is now on the newer version of tiny USB, which was needed for the uh, the STM stuff. So thanks to TAC for for doing that. Uh, thanks to NTavish for the NRF fixes um, and libraries to library work too. And then uh, lastly to Hierofact for uh, specifically for adding a way to build a port without any modules at all which is kind of the place you need to start when you're adding a new port. So I'm happy to see that there's a knob now for that. So thank you to HireFact for that. And with that, let's loop around um, to Brent. Hello. Um, congrats on the keynote to Katni. Um, Jerry to finding a bug within uh, High Portal library that I updated recently. Really quick on the update, I pulled everything in once and that won't be a problem. And to MS Cosby for continued work on pushing what we can do with the USB32. Um, Brian and I talked to him about doing a WSGI server library to kind of simplify how people interact with it, and we have a good idea of how it's going to work now. So hopefully we'll see that in the future. Awesome. Thanks, Brent. Okay, Carter is looking, so we'll go to see Grover. I want to give a group hug to the team and the community. It's amazing what progress we're making on the core and uh, for all the inspiration on the projects and and uh, some of the new libraries that are coming out. I appreciate the work on that. I want to give some special hugs to uh, uh, JKW for the Adafruit MIDI library. I'm finally figuring out how to make it work right. <laughs> and, um, and I want to give a hug in advance to Katni for her how to add a new board guide. She couldn't have timed it better. Nice. Okay. Sweet. Okay, thanks, C. Grover. Let's go on to Dan. Hi. So i like to thank Tech, uh, who's, I've had several discussions with him about BLE. He wrote the Blue Fruit BLE library, which is in the Adafruit and the Arduino board support package for the NRF, NRF 52 boards, and he knows a lot about BLE. And as as um, Scott mentioned, he's uh, he's been working on Tiny USB for the STM32, also. And I want to thank um, Lucien High Air Effect for uh, continuing to work on the STM32 port. We're making really good progress on that. And as Scott mentioned, congratulations to Katni for the keynote. We'll probably see her next Monday, I think. Hear from her next Monday. And thanks to Nicholas for working on Piper Card. That was mentioned already by um, Phil. And I'll just repeat the link there. You should really look at that. It's pretty neat. And then thanks to G Magician in the um, UF2 repository on GitHub. He's He and I are working on some really low-level craft about uh, fixing fuse values when we when the bootloader runs it tries to to reinitialize the fuses if they're messed up and we're way down in the bits in that but it should be done soon okay awesome thanks dan 
Okay, uh, let's go to Phil. I can never pronounce it. Or wait, sorry. Uh, higher effects first. The ship is lurking. Uh, just group hug to everybody who helped out with the uh, STM32 port, um, in particular uh, to Dan and Tack for helping me through some uh, messy USB stuff. Um, and thanks as always to you, Scott. Awesome. Sorry, I'm taking notes. Uh, all right, let's go to Phil. Who's text only? Hakuza Tuna. Maybe he's not listening at the moment. Okay, um, let's just keep going. If he wants to chime in later, he can. All right, uh, Jason P is lurking and Jeff Epler is text only. So I will read Jeff Epler's off. So Jay Epler says, uh, hugs to Katni for taking some time to talk to me at Pi Ohio. Um, Crayola, uh, AKA uh, Roy for sticking with me when things got real for a minute. <laughs> and uh, myself, Tanuk for gentle prodding to do something the right way. Um, yeah, I like to do things the right way if I can help it. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, let's go to Jerry. Yeah, hi. Uh, see, so uh, thanks to John Park for the fun little NeoPixel controller for the Pi Gamer. Uh, nice little toy. And uh, Katni, congratulations on the keynote at Pi Ohio. Looking forward to listening to it as well. Uh, and Brent for the uh, MQTT guide. Looking forward to playing with that and for the quick fix to the including up the, the Pi Portal little problem. Otherwise, group hug, lots going on. Everybody's making great progress everywhere. Thanks. Woohoo. All right. Thanks, Jerry. All right. Uh, J Trip and Kira North are looking. So we'll go to Maker Melissa. Hello. Hello. I wanted to give a hug report to Katni for her uh, Pi Ohio keynote. And I can't wait to see the recordings when they're out. And I have report to PT for a great blog post about my Magpie article. I have report to Daryl24015 for testing my Pi Badger PR. And I have report to Hexet for working to improve the Featherwing Library Mini TFT module. Ooh, nice. Mm. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. Okay, Mike is lurking. So I will read Summersoft off here. Summersoft uh, says, uh, thanks to Hoffman Yan for giving Adabot some love on the Arduino side. Also for catching my off by one leads to infinite loop error, uh, waiting for the GitHub rate limit reset. Apologies again for that. Uh, hugs to Katni for representing at Pi Ohio and congrats on the keynote. I'm impatiently waiting for them to upload the talk videos. Uh, thanks to Carlos once again for the Travis check on building added boards. Uh, thanks to Tan Newt, myself, for the awesome review on the module support matrix PR. And uh, group hug to, or, oh, group hug to everybody because you're all hashtag awesome. And lastly, uh, Phil's got, uh, Phil Moyer, Kuzatuna has a hug report. Um says, uh, yep, hugs to Jerry, Lady Ada, and Brent Rue for fixing issue 46 and 47 on the Pi Portal, the gamepad shift bug. Um, and Jeff says, what I think I heard about videos is that everyone is org everybody organizing Pi Ohio is going to take a deep breath before getting the videos online, so be patient. Yes, true. Running, <laughs> running a conference is a lot of work so we should thank the Pi Ohio folks as well for everything they've done and thanks for the reminder Jeff Jeff says they really knocked it out of the park they deserve hug reports too so shout out to the everybody who organized Pi Ohio thank you for hosting Katni's keynote and uh, the larger Python community community okay let's go to status updates uh, status updates are done as a round robin as well. And this is a chance to just briefly talk about the work that you've been doing and the work that you plan on doing in the coming week. It's a great way for everybody to get on the same page and 
uh, give each other tips and tricks about uh, any of the work that has overlapped with past work that you've done or things like that. So uh, I will get started again. Um, last week I went heads down on wrapping up all the OLED, OLED display support. Uh, in particular, I discovered that uh, the large chunky OLED that we carry in the store can do grayscale, which I was very excited about. So um, I got that working and it looks pretty good. So uh, if you want to play around with grayscale OLED, I rec recommend picking up that uh, product. Uh, so yeah, I added four drivers um, that are all OLEDs with Display I.O. for the SSD 1306, 1322, 1325, and 1327. Um, two of those don't actually have Adafruit products. The 22 and the 27 don't. Um, but the 1306 and the 1325 are available in Adafruit products. Um, so, and they are also available as over I2C for the SSD 1306. So a uh, lots of cool stuff there. Um, the terminal works just like it does on the TFT. So, uh, happy with that. I've got one outstanding PR to wrap up for that. Um, but that, that's super close to done. Uh, I did reviews of the STM PR and I did, uh, reviews of the audio IO changes from, from Jeff Epler as well. Um, I submitted a PR to add write to then read from to busio.i squared C. Uh, I got lots of good feedback. I haven't actually read through it because I was camping all weekend. Uh, so I will circle back on those changes later this week. And we can talk about them in the weeds if people want to. But uh, otherwise, the discussion is on the issue. Um, I cleaned up my own read the docs warnings. I don't know if people have seen this still, but because of the service deprecation, uh, read the docs dumped a bunch of warnings that happened at the top of the page and I had a ton of them and I figured out how to actually make those go away. So I went through all those and made sure that they were all updated. Uh, if you have those as well um, and you're like me, the, in those warnings they have links to in, more information about it. If you middle click and open it in a new tab, it won't actually acknowledge that you've acknowledged it know that you acknowledged it. So uh, if you left click on them, uh, that will make those warnings go away. So if you're like me and you still have those out, uh, that's the secret. Um, it's a weird way of doing it, but it's kind of a one-off. So I understand why they haven't done anything else. Um, so today, uh, lots of catch up as I implied. I was gone all weekend camping, so I've got emails and reviews to do. Uh, so I will do that today. And then the rest of the week, I'm diving into e-paper, e-ink stuff. Um, trying to get display you know, supporting those things as well. I go to New York uh, a week from tomorrow, so I'm hoping to get all of the e-paper and really all of the display I/O stuff wrapped up by by then. So it's gonna be kind of a push, but hopefully we'll be able to. I'll be able to get through that. So let's go on to Brent. Hello. The um, past week, I did a few small bug fixes to a few different libraries. I brought up a couple circuit Python boards at HQ. Um, and then I did a lot of work on splitting out uh, ESP32 spy requests into a separate module, which is just called circuit Python requests, which mimics the C Python request library. Um, I was taking my time on it, uh, making sure I didn't break any dependencies along the way, although I'm sure something broke, regardless of how carefully I did it. Um, so I merged that all into the PyPortal library, the ESP32 spy library, and all of the guides should now reflect that change. So if you're hitting a weird mismatch error, um, make sure everything's up to date once the bundler runs today and check out the guides for more information on that. Okay. I also wrote a sub guide for using requests with um, boards that will support it. So right now, just the airlift boards. So uh, talking to HTTP or REST APIs is now way simpler because there's actually a lot of documentation for it. And I finished up uh, mini MQTT and wrote a guide on it. So this week, um, this morning, I actually got finished moving everything to requests from ESP32 spy requests. Um, going to start looking at moving Adafruit IO basics guides towards um, CircuitPython because now we have both a MQTT module and a REST API module as well. So we can do all of the examples. And I'm going to look at doing Google Cloud IoT with CircuitPython. 
because that was previously only an MQTT API, and now we have it. So that's about it. Awesome. Thanks, Brent. Good job splitting that up. All right, Carter's lurking, so let's go to see Grover. Well, I'm still working on landscaping, but uh, fortunately the weather is getting hot, so now I'm indoors. Um, recently, I deployed the uh, classic MIDI Featherwing, some examples for it, put it out on GitHub, and I wrote some MIDI sniffer code, and it seems to be pretty responsive. I also use a MIDI utility library that I wrote that converts things like note values to frequencies, frequencies to note values, and it parses note lexicons like A5 and C3 and those kinds of things. Um, but I'm having some problems with how Adafruit MIDI deals with um, a class of MIDI messages called running status. And I haven't completely characterized that just yet. It's Those are two-byte MIDI messages instead of the standard three-byte. And I'm not sure that it handles it effectively. So I'll, I'll characterize it and get an issue out on GitHub. Is that with USB MIDI? No, it's I'm using uh, UART MIDI for this, classic MIDI. I haven't tried it with uh, USB MIDI yet. Because there is but, some packing uh, and unpacking into the hood for that. But When I looked at it, I, I saw there was a... Um, a standard part of the driver that, or the library that dealt with a three byte MIDI message, whether it was coming from UART or from um, USB. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see any provisions for the two byte message that holds the status of the last message. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not real sure that it's in there. I still have some more debugging to do on that. Okay. Anyway, um, I wrote a circuit Python uh, library slash driver for uh, an 809833 precision waveform generator chip. I put it on a feather wing. It's kind of fun to use. Mm -hmm. It's a, um, a 0 to 12.5 megahertz sine square triangle generator that has something like 0.001% accuracy. Mm. Um, but it's pretty affordable. And I'm going to use it as a, um, not just a desktop uh, troubleshooting aid, you know, a piece of test equipment, but I'm also mm -hmm. going to use it as a voicing module for MIDI. So I'm playing around with uh, driving the waveform generator with MIDI. To do that, I put together that library and the driver, but I, you know, I'm a hardware guy, so I sketch it out as a, a transport mm -hmm. uh, mechanism with a front panel, and that's how I developed the software from that. Mm -hmm. I, I just emulated what I would like to see in terms of buttons. And that seems to work for me as a workflow anyway. So, I'm, so I've got MIDI reading and playing notes uh, now, and they're very accurate, which is kind of nice to have. They don't have to tune it. Right. And then the second thing is um, I'm going to try to get the envelope ADSR stuff working today so it sounds like a real instrument or a, you know, a real uh, musical instrument of some, for, uh, mm -hmm. some sort. Um, and then next week... Since some critical parts just arrived from DigiKey, I'm going to restart the Stringcar M0 Express board. And that's why I gave Katni the, the hug in advance is that her learning guide couldn't have arrived at a better time because I'm going to have to learn about how to do this. Hmm. And there are four more purple PCBs on my bench right now that are looking for some love and attention, and they're just going to have to wait. <laughs> I know how that is. Yeah, and there's more coming, unfortunately. It's so much fun ordering from Osh Park, though. Oh, I, I love designing printed circuit boards uh, almost better than assembling and using them. So Yes, I totally feel uh, that. I have wait, did I say that out loud? I have rhododendrons sitting on my desk waiting for me to put parts on them. Yeah, see, that's... Okay, well, yeah, I'm identifying with that. <laughs> yep. Cool. Thanks for the update. All right, let's okay. go to Dan. Okay. So it's been like all BLE the past uh, week. Um, I'm working on pairing, which is uh, devices negotiating uh, security between them. And um, I had to generalize the way that peripherals can talk to centrals and ask for services. It used to be just that centrals would ask peripherals for services. So that code was... was generalized and I then wrote a, a Python library to talk to the current time service, which is your phone, your iPhone actually exposes that service. So that's going to be the next 
demo, mm -hmm. and I'm working on the BLE pairing necessary to get that service to get a, a, an error of 52A40 board to talk to the phone to find out what time it is. And that's some work getting the pairing done, right? It's like a multi-step protocol. But uh, hopefully when that's done, and that example works, then I can start working on BLE HID after that. But I'm learning all kinds of new stuff about BLE all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little too much maybe okay yeah, I, I liked your comment of i i forget where it was about how most protocols you can just learn one layer but with BLE for some reason you like you have to learn all the layers you do have to learn all you have to understand all the layers except maybe the even the transport layer maybe <laughs> you have to understand some of that it's 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 like a very orthogonal protocol huh. in a bad way okay <laughs> Interesting. And and any particular device can have multiple roles, so it's actually really hard to make an object-oriented abstraction because things change. Like I'm a floor wax and a dessert topping. That's kind of like that. All right. <laughs> I'm a floor wax and a dessert topping. That's a very old joke from Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Okay. I my pop culture <laughs> is not strong, but I enjoyed it anyway. All right. Uh, the ship is looking, so we're going to higher effect. Lucian? Must be AFK. Uh, sorry, if, you're, if it was me, I dropped off for two seconds for some reason. Yeah, it's right you. at the wrong time. Go ahead. Okay, all right, cool. Um, I'm I'm doing lots of stuff this week. Um, unfortunately, we've stalled out a little bit on the STM32 uh, F412 uh, USB because um, we can't there's probably something i mean last time we had some problems it was unfortunately an undocumented quirk uh for the 411 that's a, some difference between the way the stm32 handles pull ups on their pins and the way that uh 10 usb does so i'm a little bit worried that it might be something like that so i'm hoping to get tax help on uh figuring that out and so in the meantime i'm probably going to be doing um i squared c uh this week uh implementing that module and then uh you know we'll see how quickly that goes uh, and then uh, also filling out the rest of the feature set on the F411, which uh, doesn't have the pins and, and all the modules uh, in quite yet. And hopefully catching any differences uh, between in the HAL layer uh, that STM likes to sneak in. Most of the stuff is the same. And then there's just sometimes stuff that's not the same. And hmm. they don't tell you about it. <laughs> and you just kind of find out. And uh, so hopefully we won't get into that. But um, yeah, looking forward to getting a uh, much more expanded feature set on uh, the uh, STM 412 um, and hopefully getting USB on that soon and then getting uh, the F411 up to speed as well uh, so that we can get in our pull request. In. Sweet. Alrighty. Awesome. Thanks. Getting distracted by SNL links. Uh, all right. Uh, Kuzatuna. Are you around? He is typing, so yes, probably. Nothing for him. Okay. All right. Jason P is looking, so I'll read off Jeff Epler. Jeff says, uh, creation of the new audio core module is done. Uh, note that this is a breaking change. Uh, NRF audio pull request updated to use audio PWM IO name. Uh, this week slash weekend, uh, pause and resume support and any requested rework. Hopefully a week from now, the new, the pull request will be ready for merge. Awesome. All right. Go ahead, Jerry. Um, yeah, so not as, nearly as much time as I'd hoped for CircuitPython. This, this retirement stuff is really exhausting. And... Uh, so I, I did try to fix the little pipe portal issue that came up, uh, but got halfway through it and then got stuck really just trying to understand the history. But Brent fixed it and it's all done and working again. Mm. And um, my great buster migration is still in progress, uh, working through a bunch of Raspberry Pis and uh, making sure buster doesn't break too many things. So far, so far, no, 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 no problems, just time. 
and um, did get my deck power washed and, and the screens repaired though. So that was a major accomplishment. And uh, next week, I uh, just, I'm not predicting anything. Um, do, <laughs> I'll do what I can. Cool. Thanks for the update, Jerry. Yep. Uh, I just power washed my deck as well. So I, I can relate. However, I imagine your deck is larger than mine is. It's my first foray into power washing though. It was a lot of fun. Mm. Yeah, it is. It, it's fun to see the progress. All right. Uh, J Trip and Kinger North are lurking. So let's go to Maker Melissa. Hello. Hello. Okay, so last week I fixed the Pi Badger to work with the Pi Badge LC because it doesn't have an accelerometer on it. Mm -hmm. And then I updated uh, the Arduino ST7735 examples to work with the new 2 inch display and also the Pi Badge and Pi Gamer. And then I added the Raspberry Pi Compute modules to CircuitPython.org. Finished a guide for adding the boards to circuitpython.org. Started working on a guide for display I.O. breakouts and shields, but the plan changed to go ahead and just update individual guides, since there's so many of them. And uh, I also replaced my MacBook Pro batteries. Delete. Hmm. Using an iFix kit. <laughs> um, this week, I'm going to work on updating the display guides for display I.O. I want to test out uh, OLED, uh, an issue with the uh, I2C OLED on Raspberry. Actually, it's on a Dragon board now. Mm -hmm. So I want to try that out. Um, I need to, I want to test out the smaller new displays to make sure they work with the current Arduino examples. They should. And I might work on the Raspberry Pi Buster touch screen issues if I have time for that. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks. Okay, lastly, we have Summersoft, who's not able to... Oh, no, we have two folks left who are both uh, not in the meeting but have notes. Uh, first is Summersoft. Uh, Summersoft says, uh, Last week, worked on Rosie Pi, attempted to compile GCC ARM non EABI from source on Raspbian once, and that's not happening. Shifted to putting Ubuntu servers ARM64 RPI image on, uh, fought with the Ethernet settings for a few days, Ended up being the older cable I was using, combined with the fact that the kernel wouldn't properly audio negotiate a slower two-wire based speed. Uh, for the core docs, uh, module support matrix uh, revamped according to the review, now lists each board and the modules that are available for each. Uh, added port-wide inclusion slash exclusion based on mpconfigport.mk. Forgot about that initially. Uh, got Sphinx building with the current version, uh, 2.1.2. Just needed to rework the C2RST parser into an extension. This also drops one requirement for CPython 2 since end of life is coming up. Uh, for circuitpython.org uh, libraries, I totally missed that Catney had merged the PR in Adabot about a week ago. Uh, updated the Adabot submodule in circuitpython.org repo, but forgot to tag a reviewer on the PR. Uh, this week for Rosie Pi, uh, buy a new Ethernet cable. Uh, test if GCC ARM non EABI will run on the ARM64 distro and get test get the test framework and test board communication working on the Raspberry Pi. So that's Summer Sauce update. And lastly, we have an update from Tammy Makes Things. Uh, Tammy says, uh, not much Circuit Python time this week or for the next few. Uh, moving to Arizona at the beginning of September. Wish them well. Okay. And uh, that's it for status updates. Let's move on to our final section, In the Weeds. This is a chance for us to talk about whatever we care to talk about, maybe longer form technical discussion or uh, community stuff. If you have stuff you'd like to talk about, um, drop it in the notes doc or drop it in the, text the CircuitPython text channel. We'll pick it up and uh, chat about it in order there. Uh, we have one item currently, so I'm going to kick it over to Brent to talk about uh, that topic. So the topic I would like to talk about is um, categorizing the helper libraries within the CircuitPython bundle. So a lot of the driver libraries have categorizations, such as what blinks an LED or what can you put on a display. But the helper library um, documentation doesn't have sub categories, I guess, or categories at all. And I was adding a file to it yesterday, 
and I was thinking, oh, this could benefit from having split up um, helper library like list on the read the docs. So mm -hmm. I was just trying to figure out if we should have very broad um, helper library API categorizations or more distinct ones like IoT and then fonts and then audio and things like that. Uh, whatever you think is best, I would say. <laughs> like, we can always okay. reorganize it later. Um, so, you know, if you play with it and find the right balance, right? Like, mm -hmm. another way to think about it is, like, how many you want per category uh, right. to give enough detail. So, uh, I think it's up to you. Sure. Would anybody be opposed to me doing this, or...? I I don't think so. Okay, cool. <laughs> I think in, in general, crickets is like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Um, so yeah, it sounds like a great idea. And sure, uh, I'll work on that later this week. I think you've already had discussions with Summersoft about it. Um, yeah. But there's some interesting ideas I think there around, like Cookie Cutter now asks for tags that are used mm -hmm. in the setup.py I think for a pip. Um, and it would be interesting to actually like align those tags with the GitHub repo topics and also right. um, this page that you're talking about. So um, potentially there's some like duplication of effort there that we should automate away as well. Sure. Uh, but for now, I'd say like just do it by hand and, and that will give us an idea of what resolution we need and things like that. Totally. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for having that idea. It's a good idea. All right, any other topics? I haven't seen any. This is a quick meeting this week. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, 46.57. This has been the CircuitPython Weekly for July 29th, 2019. Happens every week on Mondays at uh, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on the Adafruit Discord server. Uh, you can join that server by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. Um, that will jump you into our, our Discord server. We're usually only in the voice channel uh, during that time. Uh, we're in the text channel most of the week, so uh, feel free to jump, jump into the CircuitPython text channel. Uh, and ask any questions you have there. We all, if you need more uh, beginner support or uh, on how to use it, uh, how to use CircuitPython, there's a help with CircuitPython channel there as well. Um, this meeting is recorded, uh, so it will go up on the Adafruit YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Adafruit, and it will go up on podcast services uh, around the globe as well. Uh, so you can sub subscribe there and listen to it later. Uh, the description has, uh, the video descriptions uh, have links to notes. So if you want to skip around into, in the, uh, in the video or in the audio, there should be time codes there to help you do that. And I think that's it. Um, so thank you everybody who made it this week and uh, we'll talk with you all next week.